Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. In today's video we will talk about built-in on-screen signal information display functionality of DSO-138 oscilloscope. In couple of previous videos, we talked about several important parameters of signals, period, frequency, and etc. We learned how to scale signal to best fit display. We also learned how to measure and determine frequency, period, and amplitude of the signal. Colloquially, we referred to period and amplitude of the signal, as width and height of the signal, in order to explain in common terms some of the more intricate signal parameters. Now, let's see what oscilloscope on its own can tell us about input signal. Now, our oscilloscope wouldn't be much more than a toy, if it couldn't automatically measure and provide information about signal, more reliably and accurately, than having us taking observations and measures on our own, and then doing the math, calculating period, frequency, amplitude, and etc. Let's see how it does that. In one of the previous videos we talked about AC signals, and we have determined that all signals are analog in nature. What is colloquially known as digital signals, are in fact special kind of analog signals, more accurately referred to as discrete signals, or time-based signals. Now, how does our oscilloscope, that is digital device in its name and nature, make sense of analog input? The answer is in method called sampling. Sampling is method of taking a number of readings of observed signal, in regular time intervals, and assigning each reading a numerical value, from range of predetermined set of values. Number of sample readings, taken in time interval of one second, is called sampling resolution. Alongside with number of readings taken in one second, next important thing about signal sampling is set of numerical values, that are individually assigned to each reading. The larger the set, the more accurate and reliable the sampling is. According to device manufacturer, our oscilloscope has sampling resolution of 1 mega symbol per second. This means that our input signal is probed and assigned numerical value 1 million times in 1 second. This is pretty high sampling resolution, and as a result, our signal has a high fidelity. Fidelity is term used to describe how much a copy matches original. The higher the fidelity, the closer a copy is to an original. Now, let's put this all into perspective and see how all this sampling gobbledygook enables oscilloscope to provide signal information. Via internal mechanism and inner workings of oscilloscope, input signal is sampled, and as a result of that sampling, signal is digitalized, meaning it is transformed into series of numerical values. On board processor, via programming stored in oscilloscope's firmware, can take those numerical values and perform computational calculations, and provide us with information about input signal. First, let's see how to activate on-screen display functionality. Let's provide square input signal to our oscilloscope, and power up the device. Using knowledge from previous videos, let's center our signal, both horizontally and vertically, and use trigged functionality to stabilize signal display. To activate on-screen information display functionality of the oscilloscope, first, by using set push button, set focus on time division icon on our display. Then, press OK push button for 3 seconds. This activates on-screen information display. If you have paused display of the signal, you can resume it by pushing OK button again. Now, let's take a closer look at what information have oscilloscope provided for us, 
regarding our input signal. Before we take a closer look at information provided to us, we notice that information displayed on screen fluctuates, especially for signals with higher frequency. All parameters, from frequency, through signal amplitude, to root mean square voltage, changes their value constantly. As mentioned, a couple times in various previous videos, in theory, everything is ideal, so our input signal should not have different parameter values at different points in time. Values displayed on screen should remain constant and unchanging. Well, in real life, this is not so. In real life, there are no ideal signals, and our oscilloscope is far from perfect, so each time a signal is sampled, certain amount of errors creeps in. So, let's deal with this situation by pushing OK button to pause the display, so we can get a stable reading of current signal snapshot. Now, although not ideal, this is much better. So, let's dive into all of the information provided to us, and explain what each of them represents, and how to interpret them in context of our input signal. We will start from top left corner. Before we proceed with explanation of parameters displayed on our screen, we need to make a brief detour, and provide some additional information about signals, in order to be fully in compliance with what has been displayed on our screen. So far, we have been dealing mostly with square, and sometimes sign signals. There are two additional types of signals, that we have mentioned before, triangle and saw signal. Now, these four types of signals are basic signals, and most signal generators are able to generate them. All of them have their purpose in electronic, but they are not exclusive, or only types of signals that exist. All four of them have three parameters in common, period, frequency, and amplitude. However, some of them have additional parameters that define them more precisely. For example, square signal has a lot more additional parameters in compare to let's say sign signal. They are pulse width, duty cycle, time to rise, and time to fall. Same can be said for saw signal, which has time to rise and time to fall parameters, but does not have pulse width or duty cycle parameter. And what to say about audio signal? It has constantly changing amplitude, frequency, period, and etc. So, what would be frequency, period, or amplitude for this type of signal? A conclusion that we can take from this, not so brief detour about signals, is that our beloved, and dear to heart oscilloscope, will sometimes, depending on type and nature of signal, display pure nonsense. We say this with all love in our hearts. Now, back to display. From this point on, we will use our square input signal as a reference signal, to explain meaning of each displayed value. So, let's start with first one, the frequency. Frequency represents number of repetitions of signal's full life cycle in one second. It is value expressed in Hertz. More commonly, the frequency is expressed as number of signals periods in one second, and thus, the frequency of the signal is inversely proportional to the period of the signal. Next, we have a cycle parameter. Now, this is another example of poor naming practices. In this case, cycle represents period of the signal. By definition, a period of the signal is time that takes a signal to complete one full life cycle, and then starts to repeat itself. As you can see, definition of period relies heavily on cycle, and vice versa, so we can say that cycle of the signal is its period. It is a value expressed in seconds, and it is inversely proportional to signal's frequency. Next parameter is pulse width. This parameter is applicable only to signals that are square in nature. It also can be applicable to discrete or time-based signals. In both cases, pulse width tells us how long in seconds signal has non-zero value 
or how long signal is on. This parameter is closely connected to next one, and that is duty cycle. Duty cycle parameter is closely connected to pulse width parameter. It is applicable only to square signals, and similar, and it tells us ratio, or more precisely, how long signal has been high, in relation to time that signal has been low. In this context, terms high and low, denotes point of the signal with highest potential, and point of the signal with lowest potential, respectively. It is value expressed in percentage. Duty cycle value of 50% means, that signal had its high and low value for the exact same time in one period, or in one full life cycle of the signal. Pulse width, and duty cycle parameters, are meaningless for other types of signals. For some of them, the oscilloscope will not display this information at all. Next two parameters are, voltage maximum, and voltage minimum. They refer to highest and lowest point in signal's amplitude, expressed in volts. Now, this requires some explaining. These two parameters are relative parameters, meaning that value they denote, is not an absolute value, but rather relative value, in this case, reference to imaginary center line, that is referenced as zero volts. When we powered up our oscilloscope and centered our signal, so that imaginary center line of the signal, matches the center line of the display, we have manually referenced signal to center line of the display, so that our signal is symmetrical, respectively to the center line of the display, and we have assigned center line of the display value of zero volts. So, this all means, that amplitude of the signal, at its highest value, reaches value denoted by voltage maximum parameter, and at its lowest value, reaches value denoted by voltage minimum parameter, again, reference to the centerline of the display, that has assigned zero volt potential. As we know from previous videos, amplitude of the signal, or also known as its point-to-point -point value is relative number, that always has to be referenced to some other point in circuit, or in this case, the center line of the oscilloscope. Next parameter is average voltage. It represents arithmetical mean value of previous two parameters, voltage maximum, and voltage minimum. At first, this parameter looks kinda pointless, but if not zero, this parameter shows you DC offset of your signal's imaginary center line, in reference to center line of the display. In another words, put more simply, your signal is not centered in respect to center line of the display. Next, we have our good old point-to-point -point voltage parameter, also known as amplitude of the signal. It is a value expressed in volts. It also represents some of absolute values of voltage minimum and voltage maximum parameters. Now, a disclaimer. When talking about sine waves, sometimes amplitude is used to reference value of highest point of positive sine wave, meaning that amplitude denotes half value of peak-to-peak -peak value of the signal. For all other types of signals, amplitude equals point-to-point -point value of the signal, as it is case with our oscilloscope. Now, in our case, point-to-point -point value is somewhat greater than sum of absolute values of voltage minimum and voltage maximum parameters. This discrepancy can be attributed to signal instability, or interference, or just error in rounding up numbers, due to oscilloscope's own internal computational process. Next to last, is root mean square voltage. Put most simply, this parameter is result of multiplying peak-to-peak -peak value of the signal with inverse value of square root of 2. In our case, root mean square voltage of our signal is point-to-point -point value multiplied by 0.707. This parameter is used to calculate power, in relation to heat dissipation, between AC power source and DC equivalent. But, as for now, this is far beyond our current interests, and something we might deal with more in our future videos. At the end, we have an icon, at top right corner of the screen. Value displayed is related to trigged function of the display. 
In one of our previous videos, dealing with stabilizing signal display, we have talked about trigged function of the oscilloscope, trigged icon, and right hand arrow pointer, and their joint role in stabilizing signal display. Besides setting trigged function, one additional function of the right hand arrow pointer, is to read out and display, the current value of the signal, at point, where signal intersects with imaginary horizontal line, centered in reference to right hand arrow pointer. This concludes our video of on-screen information display functionality for DSO-138 oscilloscope. In next video we will talk about good practices when using our oscilloscope, so stay tuned. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.